Good morning, ladies and dudes. Thanks for coming to the Vinny Van channel. It's my pleasure to bring to you stellar content and wonderful, wonderful talking points. There was a squirrel just hanging upside down right over there, trying to get a berry. Hey, so the one time I come out here and the dang wind is not blowing, it is a miracle. It's a miracle, I'm just telling you right now. I have been, golly, I went to Corpus Christi. I went to Port Aransas, back to the beach. It was pretty windy, pretty humid. First night I slept in the van on the beach and hardly slept, it was just too hot. I was in the front seat gathering cold air from my car, running in my car all night. Wilhelmina was tired after that. I think I ran out like a good portion of gas, several gallons of gas, just running it. It's still running rich. Uh, I'm gonna get her into the uh, Toyota dealership soon. And I'm going to uh, have them do a rundown and just figure out once and for all what the heck it is. Because I know it's gotta be some kind of a, a vacuum leak and uh so it needs to happen i'm pretty much uh tired of trying to get a hold of my mechanic trying to figure out what he's doing and what his schedule is i leave messages i don't get any messages back i don't get a call back none of it and i've been running this thing with the engine light on the funny thing is the van will the, the engine light will go off and then it'll come back on like after a day. So it'll run a whole day or two even without an engine light on. And when it first started doing that, I took it to O'Reilly's and I put a little tester on it and the codes were still there. And then immediately after I tested it, the lights came back on. So even when the lights go out, the codes are still in the engine. There's a particular amount of time that goes by before, like it cycles before it sends the code back to your dash. It is a weird thing that happens with these Toyotas. I don't know why they set it up that way, but it usually takes a couple days once the code is sent from the engine to the computer, from the computer to the dashboard with the light. And I found these things out because uh, I've talked to different people who work on Toyotas and have read all the books. So, thank God for information. The guy, um, who I watch on uh, YouTube, who is a Toyota mechanic, a master mechanic for Toyotas. Um, I forget his name of the channel. I always forget when I start needing to come up with names right away off the cuff. But uh, a very cool source of information for, for Toyotas, if you got any kind of Toyota. Um, all its tendencies, what it might do, what typically happens to like my year, uh, 2004 to 2010 and uh, so I found a lot of things out thank God I've had that plethora of information to go off of because all the all the things that have been happening to Wilhelmina I've kind of guessed and done some checking and with the codes it all made sense so I was able to really go down the line and uh, replace little parts but it's something different every time I test it out so anyway Long story, long, boring story short. Um, I'm still dealing with the engine light. I, dr I drives perfectly. It's perfect. Like, she is uh, extremely well run. And so, it's really just the, it's just the, um, the fuel right now. It's, it's uh, running rich and I had another mechanic tell me he used to work at Toyota and he said that you don't want to let it run rich that long because it'll ruin your catalytic converters. Say that three times fast. Catalytic converters. And there's like three or something on my car. So you don't want to ruin those. They're very expensive. I've been running it rich for a little while. I need to get this thing taken care of. 
Um, so I'm really excited about Wilhelmina running better, getting better gas mileage. I should get much better gas mileage when it's when this thing is running, when the, when the leak is fixed, whatever's wrong with it. When we get it fixed, it shouldn't cost that much. It's a thing that just needs to be found and dealt with. And it should fix the, the, the richness of the running. So I'm excited about that getting done. And other than that, it's just those normal things. I got the hitch and uh, I have to have that installed. And it turns out I'm gonna need to put electricity on because I wasn't gonna install electricity on the bumper to where I could plug things in the tow. But it turns out the license plate relocation from the back of the van needs to be taken down to the swing away. And that will have to have electricity. So what they do is they have this little plug that goes into the light, LED on the plate, and it runs to your tow electricity. And that's how when you turn on the car and you have the lights on, it will feed electricity to your plate light. So I'm gonna have to get the plate uh, electrified. I'm gonna probably have this place down the road um, install the bumper for me because I went underneath and looked and I was like, Ugh. That's gonna take a little something. I could, I think they're gonna have to take the muffler mounts off and pull those down and insert underneath it the tow hitch and just stuff needs to be done. I got too much stuff to do. I'm gonna probably call Reese's truck pieces and have them install it. And uh, once they've done that, um, I'll have them probably put on the electricity too. It was like 650 at U-Haul to put a dang tow hitch on with electricity. I'm not paying that. But now that I have the tow hitch, that was under $200. Um, I don't think it's gonna be that much to install it. So once that's done, I can, I got like three to four week wait on the rigged uh, swing away hitch for the spare. And so I need to order that ASAP so it'll come in and I can have, I can install that myself with the tow hitch installed. So, <coughs> things are looking up. And that's really a big deal because I have to have a spare. So once I get the swing away on, I can focus on getting the tires uh, replaced and adding a spare with the size tire I have. Which would be beautiful, man. It already looks really cool with the black. But I'm still gonna do the sides with the black to bring it all together front and back. And other than that, beauty, beauty. It, I, every time I look at it, it's a different car now with that whole front end being black. And it just, um, it looks different, it looks better. It looks like somebody spent time fixing it up, lifting it, all the deals. And uh, <coughs> at this point, y'all, I have a uh, Alpi Cool refrigerator. And uh, sorry, I had to look and see who that was. I have an Alpi Cool refrigerator, but that thing takes up so much use. I am absolutely scared to head out using that refrigerator. It just sucks the battery dry, like completely sucks it dry. So I'm a little, uh, I'm looking into what it takes to build a solar system from scratch, like get the Battleborn batteries and do all the wiring and, I'm watching Will Prowse on, uh, on, I've been watching him for years, way before he, when he wrote the foot book, his foot healing book thing, because he had some disease in his feet, and um, I forget what it was, but I was, he was living in San Francisco or something, Monterey in his RV. Didn't have any of the stuff he has now. Now he's got two Teslas and owns a big house in Las Vegas, has a Porsche. Like he's wealthy from YouTube and writing his books. And um, so that's exciting for him, but he has a lot of good knowledge on solar. Look him up, do it yourself solar or something with Will Prowse. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely a wealth of information if you're into solar and you want to build something. I'm pretty sure he has all the do-it-yourself um, starter kits and stuff that he can, he gives all the links for. I'm gonna look at him. And someone said it's cheaper to set that up than it is to uh, buy a battery. Like if I'm gonna, 
if I'm going to buy a battery that is like 2,000 watts, like a Blue Eddy EB200 or something, it takes so much of the power away from the battery just to give you the power. So with 2,000 watts, you're not really getting 2,000 watts if you're using the uh, DC to AC part of it, you know, where you're plugging in a refrigerator type thing. So it just takes up so much power. And with the solar being the 200 watt, I really don't know that it will charge it well enough. I'm not really sure about all the wattage and how it works. I'm really not. So um, this has basically been a, an update on what I'm doing with the van and how what I'm looking at doing with the with the solar system. It's either I'm gonna figure out something simple and cheap to do with the solar and setting it up myself in there with a Battleborn battery. Those are 800, 900 bucks for a Battleborn battery. I'm really not sure how much more power that will give than just buying a 2,000 water. I don't know how it works. So I don't know enough to be educated enough to go and buy all the stuff and know that it's gonna run my refrigerator. At this point, the EB770 that I have is 700 watts, right? And now they come out with the EB70S, which is 800 watts. Thank you, Blue Eddie, for upgrading right pretty much after I bought that dang battery. I would have got the 800 for sure, and it's the same price. Um, yeah. It, I hooked it up one day and just ran it, and it ran it dry, and in the morning it was everything was off and the battery was dead. So I can't trust that my solar is going to charge that... Uh, battery enough to keep the refrigerator going and having a whole separate battery just to power the fridge and maybe the max fan when I get it installed. Uh, I don't know that I trust it. I'm not going to be facing all kind of issues out there. So worst case scenario is I leave the refrigerator behind and I just do the ice thing in my uh, fake Yeti cooler, which works great. Every three days I put some ice in some pan the butt because I got to drain the water and get new ice every few days but it doesn't create a problem with the power my EV70 will run everything in my van easily and recharge as long as there's some sun and if I have to find a place to plug in the van from the outside and charge the battery up I can still do that so I am definitely uh, on track and um, she's looking great I have to make sure that things are okay with her and uh when before i get ready to go but i am thinning out you saw the video biff buff is relocated to nashville or whatever so the main centerpiece of my shop is going to Nat is in nashville now hanging on a wall and in, in a studio there and uh with with him gone talking about him like he's a person because like such a personality in my shop. It's definitely different without the buffalo on the wall. He was a great big centerpiece. And now he's not gone, there's a ship wheel there. And I'm like, what happened to my, what happened to my shop? It feels different. But one of my best friends has them. I can get them back whenever I want if I ever open another shop or whatever. Um, so it's all good, I don't care. I, I feel like it's a good start to me getting going. So now I'm imagining myself taking all the pictures down off the wall, selling the chairs, selling the back bars, the cabinets and things. And uh, basically get down the road. Huh, I had uh, some people joining me, it looked like. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. Say a prayer for your boy, Vinny Van. I have definitely been going through it, a lot of stuff. I'm taking these little trips for myself, thinking about making a video and incorporating pieces of all the little trips I've taken, like the San, San Antonio, uh, when I went to uh, Kentucky to go to see the Ark, uh, my recent trip to uh, Corpus Christi. I have pieces and parts, and I think I'll put it all together and just say, you know, a uh, six months in the life, <laughs> whatever. Um, but have no fear. Thank you for your subscriptions and you're watching my videos, man. I just appreciate you guys. Um, I know my channel is not like the best channel on YouTube. Um, it, it is my life though. It's Vinny Van's life. Like I always say, it's not about van life. It's about Vinny Van's life. And um, 
that's where we're going with this. Uh, once I'm going, I will definitely be in the mode of making the, the videos, the content. And um, just right now, you know, I'm not allowing YouTube to be the biggest thing in my life. I'm building, I'm growing slowly. I'm keeping a little bit of momentum. I'm still doing this, these types of videos because I believe it's important to stay doing videos every week. But um, I'm not like making it my, there was a while there where I was just doing videos every week, two, three videos. And then I started doing the editing that and offering, you know, more intricate styles of videos. And um, for me, that is. And it took a lot of time and I became frustrated because of life and things happening and making decisions. I don't want it to run my life. I don't want it to be a thing that burns me out. And you shouldn't either. I think everyone should definitely be careful to balance things correctly and to have, uh, you know, have things in order, priority. And right now my priority is to finish up here, get things going. I'm thinking about, okay, what if I have to go and be a barber somewhere? I need to have some idea of where uh, I plan to stop and work if that happens but for the first couple months baby this guy is gonna relax okay I'm gonna find some pretty places and talk to y'all about what's up that's it so God bless you all I appreciate the the watch and uh, the interest in the channel um, you know when it comes to van life when it comes to making this jump into a different lifestyle Obviously, in life, it's important to plan and have some idea what you're doing. And so, you know, that's what I'm doing. I, I usually never did that before, but with such a big decision of leaving my business and leaving the income that I have gotten used to, um, just leaving it behind and going to a, a position where I'm using my savings to live, um, that's just huge. It's huge for me. Um, but I know on the other side that I will be able to find work. And if it came down to a recession and nobody's hiring nobody and nobody's getting haircuts, you know, I could still uh, make videos and hope that uh, my channel's going and also offer. I got different stuff I'm planning on doing, you know, with the haircuts. And, um, you know, I don't like charging if I don't have to. I would do a thing if somebody really needed to, if they wanted to bless me with whatever they could just to help me get by when it comes down to a recession or really just bad times. Uh, you know, I could always do that. Just, hey, you know, I'm gonna cut your hair and and you can pay me whatever you got. And, you know, each little bit would help. But I don't wanna get to that point. I hope the recession doesn't happen. I hope a depression doesn't happen. Um, you know, thank God I have a place to stay. I have my van and I plan on doing van life. And I'm hoping that this whole thing comes through and, uh, you know, I had other ambitions before I thought I was going to do van life, but it seemed like everything kind of dissipated and went away and there was really no other opportunity. And I'm always looking, I'm always keeping my hopes alive that something great will happen and that uh, God will please set me down in a good place where, you know, I feel like he's putting me. So we'll see what happens, but right now, I'm thinking that good deep rest, not depression, but deep rest is needed. So I'm gonna get out there and have conversations with the ghost crowd, y'all, the people I've never met who are watching my channel. And um, hopefully we can do meetups and everything and we can start meeting each other, that'd be awesome. Wherever I'm at, like if my channel grows, I will say, hey, if, are you in the area? Let's, uh, let's chill, get some coffee, let's hang out. I love getting to know people. I like knowing people wherever I go and it'd be a, a good thing to be able to get somewhere, go somewhere and actually uh, have opportunity to know people. Anyway, God bless you all. Do all the good things with the buttons. I do appreciate you. Thanks for watching.